Carol Baskin of Big Cat Rescue is one of the most hated women on social media right now. Maybe it was the way that she laughed about her missing ex-husband. Maybe it's how she appeared to judge Joe Exotic's zoo and how they take care of animals. Maybe it was how she ran Big Cat Rescue and enlisted volunteers to do the work that should be paid work. But it turns out that Netflix did sculpt a narrative about Carol Baskin that needs to be corrected. Welcome back to Inform Overload. We tell you about what's trending on the internet. I'm Charlotte Dore, cringe lord, potato queen, and very serious journalist. Subscribe for a different take on the news and follow the IO team on social media. All right, like many of you, Carol Baskin irks me. She makes me feel weird. I didn't like how she smiled and like laughed when she was talking about her presumed dead missing husband. Maybe she was just trying to be relatable, I don't know. But just because someone irks me, that doesn't mean that they don't deserve to have their story told truthfully and accurately. And that includes Carol Baskin, who may or may not have killed her husband and fed his body to the tigers. I will touch on that later in the video because there's an update on that as well. There's a new theory about her missing husband that has only recently come to light. If you haven't seen Tiger King, I don't know how at this point, it's pretty much the most popular meme on the planet and you're all sitting at home watching Netflix like crazy anyway. Tiger King is a documentary about big cats kept in captivity in America and the trials and tribulations of the people that own them. Joe Exotic is the main character and Carol Baskin is his arch nemesis. Joe Exotic is currently in prison on animal abuse charges as well as his involvement in a murder for hire plot to kill Carol Baskin. If you haven't seen it, that's about the longest of a description that I'm gonna give without giving too much away because you haven't seen it and I don't wanna spoil it. One of the points discussed in Netflix's Tiger King was how Joe Exotic Zoo, the GW Exotic Animal Park, wasn't all that different from Carol's Big Cat Rescue. The way the documentary made it look was that the animals at Big Cat Rescue were kept in tiny cages, they were fed expired meat, and they were ogled at by tons of zoo patrons all the time. Rick Kirkham, a reoccurring role in the series, also reinforced that idea by saying they were both, you know, taking advantage of exotic animals to make money. So the way Carol Baskin got into big cats was she used to buy, breed, and sell them back in the day. She doesn't really hide that past though. Big Cat Rescue has a history page on their website that details how the sanctuary used to allow visitors to pet animals up until 2003. Carol decided to stop breeding animals because she learned about the problems that it creates. Nowadays, however, she does run a reputable institution. Very reputable. Big Cat Rescue is an accredited, not-for-profit animal sanctuary. The animals aren't kept in tiny enclosures the way the Netflix documentary made it seem. Big Cat Rescue has about 67 acres in Tampa, Florida. The enclosures are huge. The smallest one is 1,200 square feet. And those enclosures are meant for the smaller animals like bobcats. The tigers and larger cats live in much larger enclosures. One of them is as big as two acres. Each enclosure is designed to fit the habitat needs of that particular animal. There are areas within the enclosure that include shaded areas, open play yards, and a lake. Big Cat's mission is to provide care for exotic cats born into captivity that can't be released back into the wild. According to Valerie Taylor, executive director of the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries, it looked as if all the filming that took place at Big Cat Rescue for the Netflix documentary was done in temporary or feeding enclosures and didn't accurately reflect where the animals actually live. The filming was also done at a once a year event, which made it seem like the Big Cat Rescue Sanctuary was always packed with tourists and she was making a ton of money off of this which isn't the case. Normally, groups are no larger than 20 people and they are taken around the sanctuary to visit the cats and learn about them. There is also no cub petting at Big Cat Rescue. The sanctuary does not buy or breed tigers. According to executive director of Carolina Tiger Rescue, Pam Falk, there's a huge difference between Carol's place and Joe's place. She said, I've seen behind the scenes footage of what went on at Joe's place. It was disgusting. I've been to Big Cat. I know Carol and Howard. It is not on the same planet. The Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries also did an audit of Big Cat Rescue just last year and found that Big Cat Rescue meets all of the requirements. In fact, in many cases, it exceeded the requirements by a lot. All right, so what about this problem with the volunteers? One of the things that struck a chord with me about Carol was she supposedly runs this successful institution, but instead of hiring a staff and paying them, she enlists volunteers to take care of the animals. Joe Exotic said that Carol brainwashed people into working for free for her. Carol Baskin said that there are over 100 volunteers that take care of the animals. Big Cat 
Habitat Rescue is a nonprofit organization, and it's not uncommon for nonprofits to enlist volunteers. But inside sources who spoke to Insider said that they're not entirely okay with the whole not paying their volunteers thing. According to Jake Belair, animal keeper at the Nashville Zoo, volunteers are vital to nonprofits, but I do have issues with the way that Carol uses them exclusively. Most of us in the animal care field have a four year degree and years of practical experience. Animals deserve expert care, not free care. There are a lot of people that might want to participate in an organization like Big Cat Rescue, but I mean, not everyone can afford to just volunteer. Some of us have livelihoods. Some of us need jobs in order to put food on the table. According to spokesperson of Big Cat Rescue, Susan Bass, their organization provides the volunteers with training and the majority of their volunteers work other jobs and can choose what days they want to volunteer. But according to another volunteer who also spoke to Insider, volunteers at Big Cat Rescue should be paid, especially considering how demanding the work is. While working at Big Cat Rescue between 2008 and 2012, she was expected to start at seven in the morning and expected to stay until five in the evening. They said, I quote, I believe when it first started up, it absolutely had to rely on volunteers, but now that they are so well known that they should be actually staffing people. Most of them work for free. Being paid minimum wage would make a huge difference. All right, so maybe Carol needs to work on getting her, her volunteers some pay for shoveling animal sh you know? <laughs> there was one more misconception about Carol that I wanted to clear up. Joe Exotic claimed that Carol was making a ton of money off of her successful sanctuary. And it is a successful sanctuary. It generated $1 million in revenue over the past few years. Carol did inherit several million dollars following the disappearance of her husband, Don Lewis. But in the last 20 years of running Big Cat Rescue, she says she's never taken a paycheck. According to Charity Navigator, in 2017, she made $55,316 as the CEO. Her husband, Howard Baskin, made $62,000 $2,671 as the CFO. But the money that the nonprofit made, that like million dollars, that went back into the sanctuary and also toward a rainy day fund in case there was any economic struggles. Nonprofit organizations like Carol Baskin's Big Cat Rescue are kept in check. Otherwise, everybody would be running nonprofits and saying that it's for a good cause and then taking all the money that it generates for themselves. Charity Navigator, which reviews the finances of nonprofits based on tax returns, gave Big Cat Rescue a perfect score of 100% based on things like a accountability, transparency, and health. The reality is institutions like Big Cat Rescue don't want to be around forever. Its purpose is to take care of exotic animals that were bred into captivity and have nowhere else to go. Many of the animals that end up there are essentially pets that the owner couldn't handle, so they abandon them. People like Joe Exotic, who breeds animals to the point where he can't handle having that many of them, so he has to go and shoot five tigers, which is why he is currently serving jail time. Sanctuaries like Big Cat Rescue will exist until the laws change change, and they no longer allow people to keep exotic animals as pets. Once that changes, eventually the animals will die off, and then there will be no need for Big Cat Rescue. As for Carol and her missing husband, yes, I left the best for last. I also got a new mic set up. Do you like it? So as for Carol and her missing husband, well, there's been some developments. Lawyer Joseph Fritz has a theory, a different theory than the theory that Carol fed him to the tigers. I do like that theory, but this one is also interesting. So remember in Tiger King how they found Don Lewis's abandoned van at a airport, and it it had no signs of any criminal activity. Well, Joseph Fritz believes that Don Lewis got on a plane heading for Costa Rica. He was strangled and then thrown out of the plane into the Gulf of Mexico, which is why his body has never been found. He said, we heard he got strangled with an electric cord in the back seat and was thrown out over the Gulf. In my working theory, one person flying the plane and one person was strangling. There are too many indications of foul play, too many motives, too many opportunities. He wouldn't leave his family, his fortune and his kids behind. Adding that Lewis cared too much about his big cats to leave so abruptly and permanently. There was enough motive and enough opportunity for something bad to have happened, and it probably did. All right, so that's all fine and good, but what do the police have to say about this? Because like, you know, a theory is a theory, but like, what about, the, what about the authorities? So the case of the disappearance of Lewis actually has been reopened since the popularity of Netflix's Tiger King. Here's another quote from Chad Cronister, Hillsbury County Sheriff. Anyone who's watched the series has seen how complicated and convoluted the cast's lives are. Don Lewis's life was no different. From his business dealings, I should say shady business dealings down in Costa Rica, to having a girlfriend down there, to funneling money down there in small amounts, taking clothes down there for different individuals, young individuals that upset parents with some of the sexual relationships he he had there. It was extremely convoluted, no different from the series. At this time, Carol Baskin is not even considered a person of interest. Christopher also believes that multiple people might have been involved in Don Lewis's murder. We will keep you updated on this one down in the comments. I'm sorry if this changes your, your perception of Carol Baskin and you just want to hate her, but I just, 
I'm sorry. Let me wrap this one up with some common features, shall we? Are you still here? Good job, you're still here. Well done. Jesse said, I always leave comments but never get featured. This is the last message. I hope I get a shout out. Oh, do you? Do you hope you get a shout out? Well, I want a lot of things that I don't get. Giselle Casongo said, try to say my name, please. Did I say it right? Giselle Casongo. Giselle Casongo. Can I say it into the microphone? Giselle Casongo. Brendan Griffin said, this chick is a Fruit Loop and a bit on the goofy side. I am not a Fruit Loop, I am a potato. That is it for me. Thanks for watching. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want more. I'll see you guys next time.